Hello, my name is Lee and welcome to today's video tutorial. Today, we're going to look at how we can use possession in Unreal Engine 4. So possession is the ability to swap from one pawn to another. Essentially, what that means is that we can switch from either one player to another player, or we can perhaps switch from a player to a vehicle. So with that in mind, let's begin and get started. So I have the default third person player map here, and we're going to be switching from one player to another. So the first thing we need to do is we need to duplicate this player. So let's select this, right click and choose browse to assets. Then we can right click on the assets and we can choose the option that says duplicate and call this player two. Now I'm going to open up the player two blueprint and I'm also going to open up the third person player blueprint. Now inside the player two, I'm going to jump over to where it says viewport. I'm going to choose add new components. I'm going to type in box. And I'm going to give this a name of maybe control box. Sounds pretty good. And essentially what this box is, is whenever the first player enters into this box, they're going to have the ability to switch to this player. So let's make this big enough so that when the player gets close to the character, he can actually be within the trigger range. So let's just pull this out and this should be okay. And press save. Now let's go to the event graph and let's right click on the box that we've just created and choose new events. And we're going to choose begin overlap. And let's again, right click and choose the one that says end overlap. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to create a new variable and we're going to choose this to be a Boolean. I'm going to call is ready and press save. And then I'm going to jump over to the third person blueprint. I'm going to create a new variable and then we're going to call this controllable. Okay. So, all right. So once we have created those, let's save this and then jump back to the Slayer 2. Now what we want to do is we want to choose other actors. We're going to click and drag out. I'm going to choose cast to third person character. Okay. And we can do the same over here. So we can type in cast to third person character. So essentially what this is saying is that if the third person character is within the trigger box, we can do something. Well, what we want to do, we want to set the variables in which we've just created to be true. So let's start with the one that we just created inside the third person player and that is controllable. So let's type in set controllable. And let's plug this in over here and we want to set this to be true. And then over here, we're going to choose set is ready and plug this up. Oh, actually, we don't need to plug this in. We can just enable this to be true. Now we can copy these and press control C and control V and plug this in over here. And we can just uncheck these because when the player is outside of the trigger box or the trigger area, we don't want them to be able to um, control the character. So let's press save. And oh, we need to plug the target into the third person character also. And now we can press save. Now back over here in the um, third person blueprint, what we need to do is, first of all, when we get to the box, the area in which we want to switch players, we want to um, initiate a key press. So we're going to type in keyboard E. Now if it's pressed, we're going to do a branch. Now the branch says that if something is true, then do one thing. And if it's false, do another thing. And we can do that based on a condition. And the condition for that is whether or not something is controllable. Okay. So whether or not the player is controllable. Now, if it are controllable, we want to get all actors of class, just like this. And we want to choose the player in which we want to get the, um, in which we want to get access to. So player two, and we can do this. And then what we want to do is we want to get the access to the actors within the array. So we can do that by getting a for each loop. So this is essentially going to allow us to access things um, within the list of the actors. And we can put this into the execution. And now for the array elements, what we want to do is we want to set this to be the is ready. So we want to make sure that that is ready. Now, if it is ready, what we want to do is we want to branch 
and we want to set the condition of the branch to be is ready. So now if it's ready, what we are able to do is we can possess the player. So if we right click here and type in possess and we uncheck the context sensitive and we'll choose this option here that says possess, we can click and drag the true into possession. Now, in terms of the target, we want to get the player controller. There we go, right here. And for the pawn, we want to put this into the array element. So at this particular point, we should be ready to test this. So let's press save and make sure this is saved. Yes. And minimize this. And then let's press play. Now, as we move around, oh, I can see I've not dragged in the player. So let's first of all, click and drag the second player in here. And again, let's try again, press play. Now, if I run up to the player, if I press the E key, as you can see, I can now switch players. Now, if I run back to the original player, you can see I can't switch back. So what we'd have to do is set up the same thing, but in reverse. Okay, so with that being said, that is how we can switch the players and be able to control another pawn. If you like this video, I would like you to let me know in the, in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. And until next time, bye-bye for now.